Hey guys, hope you're well, welcome to another devlog on my game development project. Today, as promised in my last devlog, I'm going to talk about the modular building system I'm developing from scratch. Before explaining how it works, let me explain why I decided to implement this building system. About one year ago, I was in a quite difficult phase in the development of my game. I had very little time to devote to it, like one or two hours a week, which was not enough to do anything, and I needed something new, a new challenge to motivate me and to encourage me to find more time for my game. I decided to create a modular building system for different reasons. First, this is a feature I really like because it encourages player creativity. I see a lot of players spending hours building amazing things in Minecraft, Valheim, Rust, Raft, Stranded Deep or other building games and sharing their creations on the networks. Their creations are incredible and I would love it if they did the same thing on my game. Second reason, if I had to minimize the user experience of my game, I think it would just be exploring a beautiful and stylized world with stunning landscapes, finding a peaceful place with a lovely environment, a nice exposure with perfectly oriented sunsets, and say, okay, I want to build my house here. And then building my house the way I want it, the size and style I want it, and finally end my days in this peaceful heaven. Next reason, the only buildings I had in my game were from the pirate pack I set from Synthi Studios, and these buildings don't have any interior, which is extremely sad because, you know, I love to break into people's homes. And finally, technically speaking, the modular building system is undeniably the more complex things I try to develop on the game, especially because I'm a noob developer. The bigger the challenge, the more stimulating it is. My first approach, as I had no idea where to start, was to look at existing assets. I searched the Unity Asset Store and discovered a few modular building system assets that used quite different logics, and I decided to try the Easy Build System asset from Ad Studio 12, which was not too expensive compared to others, but I quickly realized it was a bad idea. Don't misunderstand, I'm not saying this asset is bad. It works very well, it's regularly updated, and there are many tutorials, it's all good. But as soon as I wanted to do something that went beyond the asset scope, I had to open its scripts, and I was completely lost. As I was unable to understand its code, I was unable to modify and improve it. Consequently, I decided to forget this asset and really start from scratch. This experience taught me a good lesson. Assets are amazing, but the more complex they are, the harder it is to modify them, especially if they contain many scripts. So be sure to check the features and check if there is a detailed documentation before buying an asset. After this experimentation, I still didn't know where to start. So I watched some tutorials on YouTube, like how to make a building system like Rust by Gamad, or the Project Space Cube video series by Quill18 Creates, link in description. And my first approach was to use a 3D grid building system, in which the position of the object to build is constrained on the three axes X, Y, and Z. In this approach, I use scroll to increment or decrement the height of my object. This solution was really not friendly to use, because I was taking a lot of time placing objects next to each other, adjusting the height, etc. This is why I decided to add a snap feature to my building system. The principle of snapping is to facilitate the placement of an object to build based on another object already built. For the rest of this devlog, let's call the object to build the preview object and the built object the built object. For example, once a floor is built, we can easily imagine four places around this floor where the player is likely to want to build another floor. Two approaches are then possible to snapping the preview object. First, the player points to the place where the preview object should be built. And second, the player points to the edge of the object already built. I prefer to use the second approach, because the first one can quickly become complicated if several built objects are close to each other. For example, in this case, we don't know at which floor the new floor should be snapped. 
in my system I call a snapping zone a socket. I don't know really why, but I started to use this name everywhere in my code, so it's too late to change now. As you can see, my first experiments with the snapping system were pretty buggy, but you get the idea. I finally decided to abandon the 3D grid building system to allow free placement of objects and I also added a smooth effect to the movement of the preview object which is much more satisfying to use. I skipped the details of all the changes I made over the last 12 months. If you're interested, you'll find the world history and Discord, link in description. Let me instead present the final logic. The builder is divided into three modes, build, destroy and terraform. The first and most important mode is build, which allows the placement of buildable objects in the scene. The placement of the preview object is free in space, but the ground is detected to avoid building objects under it. You can rotate the preview object 15 by 15 degrees by scrolling with a nice smooth effect. You just left click to build the object and then you can use this object to snap another one. In the future, I have to add sounds and visual effects when building. Oh, one important thing to understand. For a given built object, the enabled sockets are not the same depending on the preview object I want to build. Let's take an example. I build the floor. Nice. If I want to build another floor, the sockets of the built floor will be these ones. But if I want to build a wall, the sockets will be these ones, which are completely different from the ones for floor snapping. Buildable objects are categorized into buildable object types, and each socket can snap some types of buildable objects and not other. With just floors and walls, it's still easy to manage sockets, but I'll show you in the next devlog what it looks like when you have more buildable object types. Once the object is snapped, it is still possible to rotate it. The angle is defined on the socket and depends on the preview object type. All floors will turn 90 degrees, while all walls will turn 180 degrees. Once the object is built near another object, both objects will detect each other and disable their appropriate sockets. For example, if two floors are built side by side, the following sockets will be disabled. If the two floors are struggled, only these sockets will be disabled because other floors can be snapped here and there. Finally, all this is dynamic. If I destroy this floor, then the sockets of the floor still built will be re-enabled and thus be able to snap another floor again. Before moving to the destroy mode, let's replace our ugly white blocks with real 3D models. So this is our floor and this is our wall. I modeled them on Blender with inspiration from Synthi Studios. I don't know you, but I think these models are so cute, and I think it's a perfect moment for the little reminder. If you like this devlog and this project, please give it like, and please subscribe to this channel. I know almost 80% of you guys are not subscribed, but it's free, it's just a click, and this click is the best way to help me to keep my motivation high and to help the project growing, really. So, the second mod is Destroy, which, as you can guess, allows to destroy what has been built. The principle is very simple. You point to a built object, which then turns red so that you know which object is about to be destroyed, and because destroying things is a passion, I wanted it to be satisfying in my game. That's why this destroyed object isn't only deleted, it is destructured. Each board is released and becomes independent. It's much more work, but that way it looks like the object explodes and these different parts randomly disappear after a few seconds. Little detail, if the object is made of wood, it floats on water, which brings even more realism. And finally, the third mod is Terraform. Quite quickly, I've been confronted to this issue. When I build, the terrain is sometimes a bit too high or too low. As I really hate having sand in my living room, I needed to find a solution. This solution is the developer of Pinwheel Studio, who created the Polaris asset. I've already mentioned this asset several times, but I never really introduced it. So it's time for me to introduce the Polaris asset by Pinwheel Studio, which is the low poly terrain asset I use for my game. This is absolutely not sponsored, but really, this asset is a masterpiece, and I'm extremely happy with it. It's very similar to Unity's built-in terrain asset, except that it's more complete, more powerful, and specialized for the low-poly style. Some important features to have in mind. 
GPU Accelerate, Paint Tools for Geometry, Foliage and Object, Spline Tool to create ramps and rivers, Geometry Stamper, Texture Stamper, Foliage Stamper, Object Stamper, many utility tools very useful, many extensions with other assets like Microsplat, Gaia, Vegetation Studio Pro, Amplify Shaders, etc. GPU Instancing for Foliage, many shaders, import, export, convert and many very smart tools. The asset is regularly updated, there are many tutorial videos on YouTube and the most important, the developer is super accessible and responsive on his Discord. It's really great work, you can go without any doubt. So, for my Terraform mode, I contacted the asset developer who kindly agreed to help me understanding his scripts and to tell me which functions to use to modify the Terran hate in play mode. Thanks to him, I managed to achieve the following system. The terraforming action area is materialized by this cylinder. You can change the size by scrolling. With the left click, the ground level slightly increases, and with the right click, the ground level slightly decreases. The problem is that these level changes are done in an approximate way, so if you raise and lower the ground many times, you end up with a very unequal result, with many asperities and unsatisfying results. That's why we also added a smooth action by clicking on your mouse wheel. That way, with a few clicks, the player can make the floor very clean, very nice, very pleasant. No more sin, in my living room, I can sleep peacefully, thank you Pinwheel Studio. The UI of the builder is something I worked on very late, because I hesitated a long time about how to do it. The first thing I created was a cursor to help the player see where he's pointing. I created two cursors, one for the build mode and one for the destroy mode. I also made the cursor change color when it's snapping or when it's detecting an object to destroy. How to say, I just used rectangles with simple transitions. It works but I'm not convinced, I'd like to know how to make high quality animated cursors which change shape and color as I want but I don't know how to do it. If you have any idea, please tell me in the comment section. The second part of the UI is the colored frame around the screen. It changes color depending on the mode. I'd like to make this frame a bit more visible with a glow effect maybe, but I haven't found a way to add a glow effect in a 2D interface over a 3D game yet. If you have any idea, don't hesitate to use the comment section too. Finally, I focused on the buildable objects menu. I took inspiration from the UI I created for the player customization system with some nice animations to get satisfying results. Each buildable object is displayed in this window and the player can click and drag them into these hotkeys at the bottom. Of course, this UI needs to be improved, so feel free to give any feedback to help me improving it. Generally speaking, there is still a lot to do. I want to add lots of buildable objects, lots of additions to make the user experience more fluid and more enjoyable. I've already completely recorded this system to improve it, but I'm sure I can do much better and much more efficient. Anyway, I'm very happy because I started from scratch. I didn't think I would be able to make such a complex system. And even if it's very long, even if I still have a lot to do, I'm learning a lot while doing it. And I think these first results are very promising for the future. I hope you like the system. I hope you can't wait to try it because on my side, I can't wait to let you test it. I hope I'll soon be able to launch a playtest on the building system, stay tuned. Meanwhile, don't hesitate to give me your feedback in comments or on Discord, it really helps me improving my work. I hope you like this devlog too, if so, please think about liking, subscribing and joining the Discord. Thank you for everything, I love you. Take care of yourself, cultivate your patience and see you soon for a new devlog. Cheers!